Hello everyone, this is Mr. Nobody. Um, I'm coming back at you with uh, a kind of a book review today. So because a uh, number of people were interested in my review of the Karl Barks and Don Rosa comic books, I thought I would do uh, a quick review, uh, basically some top picks from from these books, the sets, the uh, these the Karl Barks library. So I'm gonna pull out some of my favorites. Um, I'm also going to just go over really quick as an aside, um, because there's so many of these. And if you don't want to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars, although I think it's perfectly worth it, if you don't want to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars, you want to have your top picks. Um, so if I was going to get the Don Rosa library, um, I would get the first one. Um, volume one of the Don Rosa library, um, particularly because it has uh, the Son of the Sun in here. This was always one of my favorites as a kid. Um, wonderful uh, adventure with uh, Scrooge and Glumgold. And uh, so that, that would be my top pick if you were going to pick one, if you had to pick one. Um, this is a great book, lots of adventure, lots of uh, big stories, uh, lots of uh, Uncle Scrooge in it, if you're an Uncle Scrooge fan. This particular one, this first one, also has one of my favorite uh, zany comedies, which uh, Don Rose is also good at, where uh, everything seems to go wrong for Donald uh, and the kids. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. So if you get a chance to pick up one of the Don Rosa ones, just pick up the very first collection. It's a very it's a bargain too, um, because you get two books in one package. Okay, so to the Carl Barks Library, I want to talk about. Some special cases before I get on to my absolute top picks. So, for example, this one, Christmas on Bear Mountain. Um, one thing you should know about the Karl Barks Library is, to some degree, they printed them. Uh, they printed them out of order from publication. They kind of printed them somewhat in order of how popular the stories were. So, actually, you get a lot of the most popular stories in the first uh, books that they printed. And then as you go on, it fills in more, it spreads out more, you get more uh, stories with side characters um, and, and the expanded universe. But this one, Christmas on Bear Mountain, this is not like an exceptionally remarkable book necessarily. It's a good book. But the reason that it's worth mentioning is the Christmas on Bear Mountain story, which basically gives you the story of how Uncle Scrooge and Donald and the kids become friends. And uh, Carl Barks comes back to that, uh, sorry, Don Rosa comes back to that story in one of his stories and actually fleshes it out. It takes place basically between the page break, um, uh, between this page and the last page. Um, but this shows how Scrooge and uh, Donald and the kids actually became friends. And you'll see Scrooge looks a little different here. He doesn't quite have the same outfit. He lives in uh, a big mansion. Um, the money bin doesn't come up. So it, you don't have those elements yet. But if you want a very early Uncle Scrooge story, that's a good one to get. Okay, so now we're going into our second tier books. These are the ones that it's like, if you buy anything more than just the, the core best books, these are the ones you should get. These just are more great stories, wonderful variety, lots of fun. This one, Trick or Treat. Now, if you grew up watching Disney um, cartoons at all, like I did, you will actually already be familiar with this story because this was originally done as a cartoon. Um, and then Donald, uh, sorry, Carl Barks basically made an expanded version of it. And you might remember the song, trick or treat, trick or treat, trick or treat for Halloween. So that's in here, right there. Um, and I always really liked the uh, comic book version. It's more expanded. It's got some extra things that happen into it. Um, there's some other Halloween focused ones that involve hexes. Uh, and, and so that's a lot of fun too. So uh, this is just a good, if you want a lot of fun, silly stories in here, this is this is a really solid pick. And then uh, a couple of classic adventure type ones, Under the Polar Ice. This is another really fun one, um, you know, with lots of, lots of traveling the world, lots of adventures. There's also some great silly stories in here. 
Um, and uh, uh, some classics that you'll see, Carl Barks did a lot of the Donald gets a job as story. So in the Donald gets a job as story, they almost always involve Donald has gotten a job, he's finally found his place, he's found something he's truly great at, and then somehow it all just snowballs into this gigantic disaster where everybody hates him. Um, and there's a bunch of those. Uh, every now and then it actually ends happy, which to me is the biggest surprise of all. But if you have a chance um, to just pick up a, a fun mixed one, this is just a fun mix. And then this, I would actually rate pretty high the Trail of the Unicorn. This one again has one of the classic adventures, uh, which you can tell from the cover. Apart from uh, the big classic adventure that's on the front, you also find out that Santa Claus is apparently real in the Donald Duck universe. Um, and uh, another thing that's in here that's one of my favorites is the bears and porridge and Goldilocks um, story. So uh, this one, again, great variety, wonderful book. It's just maybe not at my absolute um, tip top, but it's very close. It, it, it was a contender for one of my top ones. And then my last one of the mid-tier ones, A Christmas for Shacktown. There's actually a good number of Carl Barks Christmas stories and he puts lots of nice little visual details into them. He puts little uh, holiday elements into it. You can even see this one, he's getting very Dickensian with the art. Um, there we go. So uh, he, he tries to craft, you know, these sort of both uh, heartwarming and fun stories and it is, but it's also still very much a classic Donald Duck, Uncle Scrooge story. I would also consider this particular book almost a necessity because here you get an early gyro gear loads. He's not the tall, um, skinny gyro that we quite know yet. He's a little more portly. He's got a longer beak. And this is one of your classic stories where he accidentally creates a, a man-eating intelligent wolf. And the only thing he's concerned about, of course, is that he messed up his experiment. But if you were going to pick up one of these sort of tier two books, this is definitely the one I would pick. That's why I worked up to it, because this also has the classic story, The Golden Helmet. And you see this wonderful art done on the rocky coast of North America, where they're in the search for this Viking helmet. Um, this is just uh, one of the true Donald Duck classics. It in introduces some classic villains like uh, Olaf the Blue, or sorry, Olaf the Blue is the person who wrote it. Um, Sharky, uh, all, all these great these great characters like Azure Blue. Um, and it, it's quite an adventure. It's fun. It also shows the fallibility of the characters because character after character keeps falling even after having good intentions for the idea of seizing power um, because the uh, key element in this story is actually this golden helmet that can grant you ownership of North America. And even, even the kids find it hard to let go of. And Donald sort of gets an appreciation for, for the quiet life after his adventures. And then there's one more really classic story in here, which would be a shame to miss. And that's why this one's really in the middle of the two. Um, and this is El Dorado, the Gilded Man. This was one of my favorite stories again. It uh, actually starts very simply. It's all just about stamp collecting. And then eventually, as so often happens in Karl Barks stories, it escalates. And then one thing leads to another. The next thing you know, stamp collecting leads to an adventure to South America to try and find this lost mailbag. Turns out the mailbag is in possession of El Dorado, the Gilded Man. Um, and so uh, it's... Uh, it's just a really fun adventure. You should definitely pick this one up if you have a chance. Okay, now we're to my top tier. These are sort of the essential, the essential duck collection. Um, if you're going to get any ones, get these ones. If you can pick up another one, pick up Christmas for Shacktown. Um, I've already talked about these a little bit. So the terror of the Beagle Boys. The Beagle Boys, this, I mean, that is the classic um, Donald Duck, Scrooge McDuck enemy. And this book is uh, just got all sorts of great stuff in it. Um, I've already covered it somewhat, so I won't go over it too much, but uh, it, is one, it is one of the top tier ones. It's essential. Uh, it's also notice, notable for having some humans in it. Uh, generally speaking, you don't get that many humans in uh, Carl Barks stories. 
he has an anthropomorphic world. It's a world of anthropomorphic animals. He has a fun time uh, drawing them. But he has a spy story in here with human characters that look much more like the work that Carl Barks did before he was working for Disney. Um, and it is a little weird <laughs> to see human characters in the duck world. Um, I personally think it's strange. Uh, it doesn't fit fantastically, but it's still great to just have the chance to see it. You also get the introduction of their dog, Bornworthy. You've got the junior woodchucks in here. These are all very essential elements of the duck universe. So that's why this one qualifies as one of the top picks. Okay, so the next one that I want to talk about is the Old Castle Secret. This is an interesting collection. Um, here's some, some art from the main story. Very atmospheric, very fun. Uh, but it's really the overall variety in this one also. There's uh, Gladstone Gander, one-upsmanship story. That's the, one of those things that you really want to see in these books. Um, some big adventures. Um, there's one set in Africa. Of course, some people are going to find that a little anachronistic, some of the portrayal of the these um, tribes that are there. It is what it is. Um, so if you want, you can always skip that story. That's actually one of the weaker stories in there. Uh, but this was also written a long time ago where there were still lots more um, remote tribes uh, in the African interior. Although in this case, uh, it's not meant to be any specific group. It's very much more of an idea that presents um, an obstacle. And there's just two more stories I want to mention in here. Um, Sheriff of Last Gasp, I believe it's called. This is a classic Donald Duck Western story. Um, Carl Barks had a number of Western stories. You can tell that he has a love for one. And it's both a Donald Duck story and a classic cattle wrestler, good guy trying to stop the bad guy story. Um, but then one of my favorite stories is in here. Professor Pulpart Clabberhead. Um, this is where you get some of um, Carl Barks' philosophy where he he's about to spank his kids and he runs into a child psychologist who psychologizes him and shows him how he's crushing the kid's creative expression. The kids realize that he will basically do anything that he asks them to do. They completely take advantage of it because they're no dummies. Um, they manipulate him into buying all these things for him that they never use, and then they sell them to become rich, and pretty soon they have all the money and he has nothing, and he has to um, borrow some of their money which he then uses to buy gigantic fireworks, which he puts under a chair and then invites the professor over to give him a talk. And the kids who have been taught by the professor, kids should be allowed to do anything they want, blow up the professor, um, who, as he says, says, but professor, you said that children should be allowed to, I know, I know, but blowing Professor Pulpart Clabberhead sky high with an atomic bomb is strictly against the rules. So it shows the, the complexities of actual life and raising children and, um, you know, uh, it, it's a whole lot of fun. As Donald struggles so hard to try, and, to try and be this progressive psychological parent and suddenly finds out his kids are a lot more complex than he's been led to believe by the professor. Um, and, of course, the professor believes in his creed up to the point where it impacts him negatively and he actually has to deal with the consequences. Uh, so that's a very fun book. Definitely pick that one up if you can. Okay, the next one I want to talk about is called Lost in the Andes. The title story of this is great. It uh, was also followed up by Don Rosa. He did a return to plain awful, which is uh, this a uh, lost city in the Andes where uh, they have nothing to eat but square eggs. Um, and it is a very, very fun classic adventure. The art in it is also wonderful. This is what I mean. As I said, Carl Barks is not someone who traveled a lot, but who was an excellent artist and excellent at depicting these places. And so you just get these wonderful uh, half-page panels setting the scene and then getting down into all the details. So... A very classic story there. Um, you also get the classic with Bombi the Zombie, who also shows up later in some Don Rosa things, showing how he was stalking Scrooge for decades and decades. And then finally he catches up to them, but 
he doesn't recognize Scrooge because he's gotten old. He thinks Donald is Scrooge. And so he goes after Donald instead, which sets them onto another adventure. And then the final thing I'd like to bring up from this one, Truant Officer Donald. When I was a kid, this was one of my favorites. It's a fun kid one about Donald being a truant officer and the kids trying to fool him and this back and forth adventure of kids trying to defeat adults. Um, and uh, it's got a great twist ending to it too. Um, it, there's a couple of ones like this. There's, there's another... Um, it's not a truant officer one, but there's another famous story where the kids try to play hooky and it just goes horrifically and everything they try to do just goes worse and worse and worse until finally they are happy to, <laughs> to just go to school and not fight anymore. And now for the second to last book, Only a Poor Old Man. I already talked about this book. Great uh, Beagle Boy story, great story of the classic Scrooge trying to hide or protect his money from the Beagle Boys through some sort of scheme, which results in this long-term back-and-forth battle between them. So this is definitely one that you just don't want to miss uh, out on. It's so much fun. Um, and then, of course, you get the classic backstory on Uncle Scrooge and where he started his fortune in his old days as a miner, Glittering Goldie, the Goose Egg Nugget, uh, the Yukon, all of these elements that are just the classic story of where Scrooge came from. And then another another classic story that's in here, uh, The Horseradish Treasure, which is another wonderful adventure with Scrooge and Donald uh, and the kids trying to save his fortune from someone who's uh, found a scheme to try and steal it, where he has to try and find a sunken ship with a cargo full of horseradish and deliver it to Jamaica. Um, which just shows you the sort of interesting um, concepts that drive these stories. And in this case, you have Chisel McSue, who is a genuinely um, evil character. You don't, the Beagle Boys are more of a silly evil character. This guy is genuinely evil, where he actually tries to kill the ducks. And then when he thinks he's succeeded, he tries to murder his own accomplice and throw him overboard to drown. Um, so one of the more evil uh, villains that you will ever see in a Donald Duck comic book. As I said, this, this book is almost too chock full of classic stories. You also get the story of the Menihunes, uh, a very fun Hawaiian adventure, again with the Beagle Boys, where they end up on a tropical island. Um, and then you go straight into the 1916 quarters and the discovery of Atlantis. Um, and then past that, you get the uh, Tralala story, the Shangri-La story. Um, so all of those, all of those are just uh, some of the best ones that Barks ever did. And that is why this one, in many ways, is just one of the most essential. Um, if you only have to pick up one or two, definitely make this one of them. And then the final one that we're going to come to, and partly this is my personal prejudice. Some people would maybe pick only a poor old man as their top pick. Um, I picked the seven cities of gold, and that's just because of my particular taste. The seven cities of gold when I was a kid was my favorite story. So you can see some of the art from this one, trying to find the ship, finding the way to the seven cities. Uh, it's a fantastic adventure. And then when you get through that one, this one is a Beagle Boy adventure, another Beagle Boy adventure. This one's a little different because they're actually not out to steal Scrooge's money. They're after something else, and Scrooge accidentally runs into them um, on an island where everything has been turned to stone. So that's a lot of fun. Then, of course, you get the Lemming story, which I've talked about already. Um, the Lemming in the Locket, that is a great one. Fantastic art. Another case of a story that just escalates. You also get another type of classic story, the money competition story, which you mostly see those later on with um, Flintart Glumgold, but sometimes it's some visiting rich person and they get into a competition with Scrooge. The funny thing about Scrooge is he's very much a penny-pinching miser, um, but he's also got a lot of pride and he likes to win. And so although he doesn't like spending money, he does sometimes like to get into these money competitions just to prove he is the best. He is the most competent. He is the number one. And in this case, uh, you've got a Maharaja and the various 
competitions they go through to try and uh, win against each other um, to prove who's the greatest. And then we come to the Philosopher's Stone, a very classic story. Um, I remember when Harry Potter came out and, you know, it was Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. And I was like, why is it called the Sorcerer's Stone? They're clearly talking about a Philosopher's Stone. Why don't they call it that? Then they found in England, they do call it that. They just think Americans are stu too stupid to know what a Philosopher's Stone is. And as it happens, they're, uh, they're right. But uh, if you grew up reading these stories, you never had to wonder because there's a Philosopher's Stone right here in this. Uh, there it is. Scrooge has got the Philosopher's Stone, turns base metal to gold. So that's another really fun one. So I'll just briefly talk about uh, three more stories in here because as I said, these ones are so rich and full of it. This is another sort of classic trope, as I said, a sort of contest. Scrooge tends to get into contests for someone, usually over the acquisition of some property or some business deal. In this particular one, he's trying to uh, get the deed to this um, old plantation house and they have to have a, a riverboat race which is a lot of fun. And then you get, uh, after that, a classic mining story showing how Scrooge is this great treasure finder who can't go anywhere without being able to find treasure, um, but has a bit of a twist when they end up stuck in the desert <laughs> and uh, everything they do, they try to use Scrooge's uh, ability to find water and they just keep finding treasure. They find gold and diamonds and all sorts of jewels which to them are now worthless um, and even blindfold when they're trying to find it. You know, Scrooge finds an oil well. Um, <laughs> so uh, it's, uh, it's a fun story too, uh, which Karl Barks often emphasizes. There's a number of desert stories in particular that emphasize this, that wealth is only useful in certain contexts and for certain things. And when it comes to tough situations, water is far more valuable or food is far more valuable or people and friendships are far more valuable. And he likes to put his characters in situations which take the thing that they're amazing at and then show how, yeah, you're amazing at that, but it's only useful up to this point. And then the last story in here is the search for the golden fleece, which is uh, initiated by Scrooge realizing he's been wearing the same coat um, for years and years, and he should probably have something fancier befitting his, his station and his wealth. And so he tries to find a way to get golden wool so that he can have a golden suit. Um, this one has some, some great artwork in it. I really love this panel with the setting sun and uh, the shadowed uh, larkies is what they're called in this instead of harpies and the kids watching them sail away. You get the sleepless dragon in here. He's a very silly looking guy. There's some great comedy <laughs> in here too. <laughs> like when Scrooge runs directly into the mouth of the dragon. Um, another classic story. And once again, has that classic Karl Barks twist to it. Sorry, I keep using the word classic so much. That's just what these are. Uh, they're so definitive of these stories that have been delighting generations for almost 70 years. Um, although... The victors win, they get the prize. Often there ends up being something wrong with it. Like it doesn't, it turns out it isn't what you think. And so although Scrooge does get his golden fleece and he throws away his coat, he ends up taking it back out when he realizes gold isn't comfortable to wear and something simple and humble is actually brings him a lot more comfort and warmth. Um, <laughs> and that, that's a very Barksian twist that so many of his stories have. So, okay, thank you for your patience. I know that was kind of a long and messy and wandering review. Uh, it's a lot of books to try and get through. There's so much in them. So much of it is visual details. We're talking dozens upon dozens upon dozens of stories because every one of these will have longer stories and then medium stories and then a bunch of shorts. So it's not like I in any way covered everything that's in there. So just for example, to take only a poor old man, that's the table of contents. Um, it's not like there's just three or four or five stories. You get big ones interspersed with smaller ones um, and medium-sized stories. Sometimes you get these sort of one-page one page gag, um, gag stories, uh, which of course rarely have a plot. They're just a little one-page gag that was maybe to be stuck in somewhere, maybe even just in the pages of another comic book 
or as a break between stories. Um, but anyway, those are my picks. Uh, thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you next time.